real quick before we move on to chapter 19 is um, here in verse 10 and 11. So we have, There shall not be found among you anyone who makes his son or his daughter pass through the fire, one who uses divination, one who practices witchcraft, or one who interprets omens, or a sorcerer, or one who casts a spell, or a medium, or a spiritist, or one who calls up the dead. So when we were doing our study on this, we, we did look into the Hebrew to see how solid, solid of a case we could make from the Hebrew, uh, which wasn't as solid as, as I would like to just say, oh, here's what this word means in Hebrew. Um, but in this verse, and in all translations of this verse, we have a list of things, of practices that people do that are not allowed in Israel. And this here, um, this separation between a medium or a spiritist or one who calls up the dead, that's pretty much across the board. In all the translations, we see one who calls up the dead as a separate, this is a separate act from these what these spiritists are doing and what these mediums are doing. And the reason I bring this up is there is a, a pretty ongoing debate. It's been going on for quite a long time yep. uh, about whether or not souls are literally in Sheol sleeping, waiting for the resurrection and whether or not those souls can be called up from Sheol and consulted. And obviously on the one side of the camp, there's the people who say, no, it's not possible at all. It will never happen. It never could happen. And the example of it happening in Samuel, where Samuel himself is called up, that wasn't Samuel. That was a familiar spirit. And it's only um, the witches are just talking to familiar spirits. Yeah. Just putting on a big show. Exactly. That's what the the detractors of this topic try to claim. Exactly. Right? But the father very clearly makes a commandment against calling up the dead specifically and being a medium and being a spiritist. So wait a minute. Does that mean that does God make commands against stuff that's not possible? That's my, that's my whole, that was the, the whole point I had every time I've ever debated this with somebody is why would he make a commandment against it if it wasn't possible? The reason I wanted to be able to look at the Hebrew, you know, and, you know, just be able to point right to it and say, look, there's a difference between a necromancer and a medium is because I don't want to have to use my, my experiential uh, evidence uh, to, to talk about it just because as someone who, as some of you know my testimony that I spent most of my life as an, a new age occultist. And I know from that side of things, there is a difference between a medium and someone who calls up the dead, a necromancer. There's a, there's a difference between that. And someone who is a medium isn't necessarily someone who calls up spirits of the dead. And someone who is a necromancer isn't necessarily someone who consults familiar spirits. Now, new age mediums might be deceived by Satan into thinking that they're talking to spirits of the dead, but they're not. They are talking that that is true. They, they're not talking to your dead relatives. They are talking to unclean spirits. Right. I functioned in that gift when I was, uh, when I was a new ager and I thought I was, I thought I was talking to ghosts of my dead friends and stuff like that. And I wasn't, but the father makes a very clear distinction here between someone who is pr practicing these things involved in being a medium and someone who's doing something as far as calling up spirits of the dead. So I just wanted to point out that I, I don't know how you can get around that there's an actual commandment against calling up the spirits of the dead and try to say that that's just not something he would ever allow when father because we have this free will, free agency, whatever people want to call it, because we have the ability to make a choice, there are things that happen in this world that the father does not like, but he allows because it's it's our choice. He yeah. doesn't like abortion, but we all know it's a huge, it's people the epidemic yeah. of our time. Yeah, so we can't just use our human logic and say, oh, well, he would never allow something like that to happen. Well, why would he make a... He's, he doesn't allow it as far as right. what he says is righteous and is okay. It's he, a sin. He made a, he made a commandment, thou shalt not murder, but yet Stalin killed 20 million people. Yeah. So, I mean, he did God allow that? Right. So the point is, that's a, that's a very uneducated argument is what I would say. It's, yeah. it's kind of a, a fear-based argument that's very, very biased. The point being, um, the Father gave us a commandment to not do this stuff because it's possible. Right. Right. Not he just doesn't just waste our time with instructions for things that we can never accomplish. Yeah. Right. The, otherwise, he'd be saying, "Thou shalt not put a red Tesla in space." <laughs> so anyway. <laughs> Moving on. Yeah. 
<laughs> well, you know, what I think is interesting about that passage is that, because the debate usually goes immediately to 1 Samuel 28, right? right? With the whole witch yeah. of Endor calling up Samuel. That literally happened. Nowhere in that <laughs> text from verse tw- all of chapter 28, right? And then the fulfillment of that, I believe, is in chapter 30, where what yeah. the spirit of Saul, excuse me, the spirit of Samuel, what he actually told Saul during that, that whole event came true. Yeah, give a later, true prophecy. Right? So therefore he matches what the words that came from uh, the spirit that was conjured up at that time that called itself Samuel, that Saul thought was Samuel, that, that the, the witch, witch was, was scared. Scared right? that he got so, her to commit this great sin. <laughs> if you're writing a story and you're the father commun- communicating his scripture and truth to us, you've got all three characters who think it's Samuel. Yeah. Okay. Samuel, that's the spirit talking, called yeah. himself Samuel. <laughs> Saul thought it was Samuel. The witch thought it was Samuel. Nowhere in the text does it say it wasn't Samuel, or right. that was just a familiar spirit impersonating Samuel. It would have said that. If right. that's otherwise, we've got an entire chapter leading us astray and thinking something's possible. Right. And that unclean if it was an unclean spirit, the words came true later. Yeah. And therefore he'd pass the Deuteronomy 18 test. It's horrible, right? No, the text is clear. It calls it Samuel repeatedly yeah. and doesn't negate it ever. And then the words of Samuel during that time come true later. In the events of Saul's life. And we even have, uh, what is it, the book of Sirach? There's an apocryphal book that used to be in the Bible that's taken out, actually mentions this specific event in 1 Samuel 28. Oh, yeah, that's right. I think it's and Ecclesiasticus. That's, well, I think they call it Sirach. Is what, okay, uh, sorry, okay. some of the apocryphal <laughs> books have two names. But yeah, Ecclesiasticus or Sirach uh, mentions the idea that the spirit of Samuel was, was brought up and right. actually gave a correct prophecy about the end of Saul's yeah. life. Um, so you've got a second testimony. You know. Hey family, thanks for clicking on this video. I hope you enjoy it. I hope it's beneficial to you. Please put your comments or your questions down below and we'll try to get them to them as soon as we have time. I want to thank you everyone who's our Patreon supporters for all your support throughout the months. It's so, it's so wonderful and encouraging to us. Um, it is a part of how we are able to do what we do. Many of you already know that unless you support what you love, it goes away. This is not something that makes you, you know, wealthy. Um, so if you guys want to see more content, if you guys want to keep seeing the content you're already seeing from Kingdom in Context, um, please consider the PayPal or Patreon links below. We even have a PO box if you don't want to do modern forms of that and you just want to donate through the mail. A lot of people have donated through the mail to us and written us beautiful letters. We really appreciate it. But yeah, please check that out. That's how we keep going. That's how we actually are able to keep providing this content for you. And so those of you who already have, we love you. We appreciate you. Those of you who haven't, we love you and appreciate you. Um, we would just ask that maybe consider it in the future at some point. If, if you want to see us continuing to do what we do and even get better, that's how it works. Just a little, a little bit here and there from all the different peoples allows us to have a higher level of production as well as more time from our regular jobs to be able to do this and create better content for you that hopefully is helping you share the beautiful truth of our Father's Word to those in your life, whether it's your friends or family your coworkers or whatever. That's our goal is that you can understand the scriptures and go out and share it with the world and keep the kingdom in context. It's a, it's a beautiful message that we've been given by our Creator through His Word. So thank you everybody again and I hope you enjoyed this video. See you next time.